Receiving your message was quite the surprise, Strife. Desperate times and all that. I'm still not clear on who you really are, Morrigan. If I can provide assistance, do such things matter when the world faces such peril? It could. You're friends with Solace. Our relationship is more complex than you suggest, and circumstances have compelled me to stand against friends ere now. Hello everybody and welcome back to Dragon Age the Veil vale Guard where I just loaded into this area, right? And it um I just turned the game on and it had Morgan talking to Strife and she was like, oh, I'm surprised, I was surprised to get a message from you and it was like desperate times. And then Irlin was like, Some 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 I don't know if we can, we can trust you, but who are you really? Blah blah blah. Morgan's like, Ooh, uh, I'm woohoo, you know, and then they're like she's like, Well, your friends with Solus, like I don't know if we can trust you. And she's like, My relationship with Solus is more complicated than that. And sometimes you have to stand against friends or whatever, something like that. But I was like, you guys were never friends. <laughs> but I think that's what she means. Like, our relationship was more complicated than that. It's like, yeah, as in, like, you, did, you guys didn't get along at all. So that was funny. Um, I guess, let me see. Does she have anything to say? Like, no, no. We just, she's just going to. I mean, I love her new redesign. It looks very good. Um, but she's, she's just going to. Just gonna stand here. Let me look at the quests. I think we'll do the coffee one. The the thing that I'm intrigued about is it's not it's not a coffee date, but also apparently coffee's a thing for him. So I'm like, okay, quick, we gotta figure it out. Um, but um, it talked about the possible like traitor in the midst or whatever, you know. And I've already figured out who it, who it is. So like, you know. We're all good. I, was, I just had a brief memory of like when I played Trespasser the first time, I had rented an Xbox One in order to be able to play it. And so it was my first time recording on it. And my first time using Adobe Premiere was for that DLC specifically. And I remember I had... Something was up with the recording software in such a way that when I... Every time I would go into an Alluvian, for whatever reason, like the loading or whatever... Were fearless. Threatening the demon of Virantium to his face certainly proves it. You know, it's actually the opposite. I'm afraid of what you are. I'm brutally honest. She didn't mention that part. I've seen demons. I know how they can corrupt. I know it won't even be your fault if it happens. But I won't let someone else turn on my friends. No matter how scared I am. Good. Keep your bow close. <laughs> Listen, he's a, apparently just exactly what I what I like. You know, oh, you might have to kill me, and I can only hang out with people who are potentially willing to kill me. Um, yes. Um, anyway, I took off also the chin makeup or the chin whatever um stuff because I it was so itchy and I was I was going crazy, and also I swear I can taste it in my mouth. Uh, which is horrifying. So I also messed a little bit with some of it that's like near the top of my mouth and I was like eh. Yeah, okay butterfly still there. Uh, I like the idea of walking through the Crossroads instead of fast traveling. It feels a bit more immersive, but um, Yeah, I think Harding is a little bit too like I'm I'm just a cinnamon roll. Maybe that's what it is. She's too cinnamon rolly for me. And I'm like, yeah, it's a little sweet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying prior to this shoot about the, before they started talking. Anyway, it's getting late and also my eyes are so dry right now. I think it's just because I'm like aware of my face when I'm wearing this stuff and I'm like, I can't touch it, you know? See, where, see, there's the there's the skull with the crown and the flower. This is like a scarab beetle. Are you one spirit who moves around, or different spirits who all look the same? As needed, dweller. Oh, okay. Right. That actually does make sense. Why this one? I should I would think would take me to Navara. Ooh, Onward, you see, dweller. I just noticed the skeleton pillars. I could 
fast travel, but like, I don't know, they've given me a pretty neat means of wandering around. Where'd all the fate spirits go? Have I taken down too many of the defenses? I'm also sure I'll potentially find um, secrets that I missed the first time, you know? Oh, there they are. They're chilling because it, it's safe now. The spirits are returning. They should be safe now with the defenders on alert. I mean, hopefully I don't um, count as an imposter. What an interesting math. Oh, is that like Dread Wolf, like with the six eyes? Interesting. I was like trying to figure out what the mask was. I want to overhear Fade come. Is that a wisp? I want to hear Fade conversations. These are distinct elven entities that have corporeal form. Like, well, not corporeal. They have um, a more. Oh, we're just gonna we're just gonna flip that around willy nilly. Sick. Um, but these guys are obviously like the dead. And like, are these two groups like talking to each other or what? Like, these guys still have like a, a distinct, like, at least a appearance of a fleshy form. These are just straight up skeletons in robes. Tell me your secrets. Oh, you have a face. Wild. I've never, I mean, we've never been in a place where we can just interact with, I would think, can they see me? Like, you know, are we... Oh my gosh, what? There's a dread, there's a dread wolf mask back there, did you see that? <sighs> okay. A puzzle that seems solved, but the Veldrum portrays to find the broken paths that seem at first complete. That is where the gateways are, where the monsters hide. Sure. We can try to get... Oh my gosh, is this... That looks like one of my favorite swords from, um... Inquisition. Grey Warden Smith, but it's crafted in the Dalish style? Sure, I'm apparently using whatever passes for- Oh, yep, appearance, yep. Yeah. Yeah, whatever passes for, uh, free, um, money. Monetary stuff in here, these spirity things. An ancient relic bearing mysterious symbols. If only I could buy more decor. You guys see the the dish or the wolf, the dread wolf? There's just like three of them. At least this one's definitely a dread wolf. I would I I would love to buy pins. I would love to buy and collect pins, but like I don't have anywhere to put them really, you know. And so I there is a spirit cat up there. Um, but if that was a pin, I'd be tempted. Uh, can I pet the spirit cat? I can't, I'm being denied access to the spirit cat. I don't remember. I think we can't go into these yet. That will take us to the Anderfells eventually. Uh, we've already been here. So, the demon of Virantium. <laughs> the name wasn't literal when I got it. No. But the reputation that went with it... I suppose I earned it. And then some. Assuming my sources are accurate. Past reputation means nothing when your current contract's still open. <laughs> I know the feeling. Um, also, they keep, like, harassing him. Why, why, why isn't he asking her about her stuff, you know? But... Oh, like I was saying, I want to do in the crows. We're thinking there's potential. There's a traitor, right? And apparently, this coffee with the crows thing is supposed to be uh, in looking for the traitor, um, which I already think I have it figured out. But. Also, like, when can we get rid of the Talvashoth? Did this? Is this new? 
Oh, this, I just walked right into the casino. Cool, okay. Of course, a crow casino has, like, you know, a walkway up in the rafters. I will say, like, I don't know, there's, like, the, the, the thigh gap on a lot of people is a little weird in this one. Like, I don't know, it's never really been an issue. But everyone's so, like, stocky now, and then they have a thigh gap, and I'm like, that's unrealistically wide for your hips, like, you know? Like, Antam blood. I'll keep the goods flowing. Yeah. <laughs> Can, oh, good. Finally, I can sell my valuables. Oh. Selling to the factions gives me... Okay. The next false avatar. Crow diplomacy at its most hypothetical, possibly signed in jest with one of the more rambunctious divines. A price on the head of a false prophet should one arise. Sure. Oh. A gift. <gasps> we get gifts. We get to give. I forgot we get to give gifts. Here, I will buy this gift for you, my dude. I don't know when I get to give it to you, but I will buy it. Oh. <laughs> Reinforced ram leather, dye black says, you won't see me coming. While the, col the bold blue cape says it doesn't matter if you do. I like that, I will buy this. Have I upgraded a shop yet? Uh... Sure. I think I have. Oh, no, nope, apparently I have it. Mm, well, do I get to buy other things now? Decor a Trevisio Crow. I will buy that. I want. I want new decor for my walls. The spirit, a spirit is said to be attached to this mask. Those who wear it find themselves taken over by a silent presence that guides their hand. Just an actual crow. Just like a crow head. I'm buying this. I want the appearance. The, um, like, casual wear of the Antiven crows and the casual wear of the Lords of Fortune is by far the best, in my opinion. Cool. Good with your contracts. Quest acquired fit for a crow. What? You want me to give him the the shirt? Or the tea? Oh, he wants the tea set. Lucanus could use a pleasant surprise, perhaps a gift for his quarters in the lighthouse. I don't even know that he likes tea, but I know he's a fancy man. Like, you know? Oh, this is a cool statue. I like this a lot. Oh, but I will... Sorry, I will put him in the new armor. This one is good. It's a good one. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. The cape thing. I just... Apparently, I just... I have a thing for dudes with cape-like... He even... This looks kind of like Solus... Or not Solus. Uh, what's his name? Thing? Thing? We'll see, though. We'll see. I haven't even acquired Davrin yet. Greetings, Rook. I am Air, one who provides training for Antivan crows. You're not a crow yourself? Not as such, but we are frequently at their service. That answer suits them, as it should suit you. Okay. That's cool. What is this? Oh. Crow diplomacy dating from the fourth blight as guild influence grew. Grey wardens were the first to recognize true and even leadership. Thereafter, treaties bore seals of queens, emperors, and crows. Okay. And we have Allure. King's draft action on behalf of Antiva. As seventh talent, I give notice that the Antivan crows have drawn a contract against the enemies of Trevisio, the Antom. It is not the Antom. We aren't required to give his majesty a point by point, but he's your blood, Viago. It is a courtesy to let him know we are going to war. The occupying Antom are strong, driven, fanatical. They cannot be reasoned with be because reason is just a weapon to be resisted. They can be killed, of course, but removing a leader does not remove their desire to be led. Yes. They are force we must contend with, but they are not Trevisio's true enemy. And this is why, okay, so I think they must, they must be being allowed to do this, honestly. Like, by the Canari. 
like as a whole because otherwise they would just be going mad potentially you know but yeah this is why i think they were like i pointed this out way back that like i think the canari are a terrible foe for the antivan people because the crows can't just assassinate a leader and have it be done you know a name Viago contracts require a stabber and a stabby. Tia, you know my doubts. The butcher took the city too easily, and there is dealings with the gods that uh, dealing with the gods there that I dread to know. But I fear that the true enemy of Treviso is not known because they are known merely unrevealed. The hand that leashed Treviso is that nebulous enough? Yes, that is a series of someone's we can eventually kill, but not something we can send my father. On the draft five, then Neri begin again. So, Viago, so these are, they're kind of, are they related to royalty? I'm not actually sure how Viago is related. I think Neri's the woman, no, Tia is the woman that they seem together, him and her. And she's running this establishment. Uh, I thought maybe he was related to the other crows as well, but I don't think so. But I wouldn't surprise me if the crows and the royalty, like, the blood overlapped. You know what I mean? Dwarven people. Ooh, what did we get? Harding's notes. Thoughts on stone sense. I can more reliably use my new abilities now thanks to Rook's encouragement. Oddly enough, it's easier to handle certain kinds of rock. Some just don't seem to respond to me. Is it a titan thing? Maybe some stone was closer to or part of a titan? Maybe I just need to get better? I don't know. It must be stone sense. Just extra. I can now do the things that people with stone sense can do. If I can concentrate hard, I can tell if there's a caravan close by or water or lyrium vein. I can tell different types of rock apart. They sound different, but I'm listening with something other than my ears. That makes no sense written down, but it feels true. Encouragement from Harding's Ma. Dearest Lace, remember when Sir Russ bucked and threw you and land you landed face first on that pitchfork? Oh my gosh, there were so many tears those first weeks, but not from not recognizing yourself in the mirror. But that didn't that was mostly the swelling, and in the end the scar didn't ruin anything. You learned to accept it as part of you. Of course the Titan's gift changes you. Oh my gosh, the mom is being very like Alright, I think I was saying something about how Harding's mom seems to be accepting all this very quickly, but I, like, rubbed my face, like, really bad, and got makeup, all the, the paint all over my eyes, <laughs> so I had to go get that off pronto, and I'm hoping I don't give myself pink eye or something, um, but I did, I tried to fix it a little, it's whatever, but it's still, there's still some paint there, but yeah, she seems to be very accepting of the fact that, like, the titans have awoken in her daughter, like, you know, Every day add some, the Titan's gifts changed you. Every day add something new. Sometimes it's little, sometimes it's big. And so often it's painful, but it doesn't lessen us. Change is difficult, but all growth is. And a thing that stops growing while it's dead, isn't it? I do worry, of course, about what it all means. Okay, good. But I've worried, I've always worried a little about your adventures. Whatever comes, I know you're strong enough to bear it. Love, Ma. Boo, that's so nice. Hardy's at Kalsh Rock. I've been thinking about Kalsh Rock. Aside from Orzammar, it's the only other great tide we know about. It was supposedly destroyed in the first blight. The tide was in the dark spawn's path. The dwarves tilted it off and retreated to Orzammar. They abandoned their own people. And then about 20 years ago, we learned that the city survived and continues to hold a terrible and justified grudge against Orzammar. Kalsh Rock has secrets. Many, many secrets. How they survived the blight is one, and I hope a greater understanding of the titans is another. Charter knows people who can put me in touch. I hope they're okay talking to me. It doesn't matter if they don't know much more than I do. If they accept the titans and are curious about them it'll be a huge improvement over orzammar yeah because orzammar probably doesn't talk to like harding right because harding's a surface dwarf and they're like really like orzammar at least is really like particular about that sort of a thing we have no idea what cow is like 20 was it 25 yeah because 20 years ago would be origins yes and i think that is when we learned that cow might still be alive no, I thought that was the Inquisition. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, getting the strong feeling that Orzammar doesn't want to acknowledge the Titan's existence. You'd think the capital of Dwarven civilization would be interested in the history of our people, but nope. Almost ten years since Shape Revolta, yes, connected with her Titan, and they don't care. I know they know. Oh, that's right, so she, so Harding would know about the Titans. I mean, I knew that she would know about them just in, like, tangentially, but she knows all about it because she was part of the Inquisition. They d I delivered the Inquisition report to the Assembly myself. Technically, I delivered it to an Assembly aide because I'm a surfacer. I don't get to be anywhere near the Assembly hall. Sure wasn't fun learning that. Record that exists. I mean, Orzammar is very high-strung. 
Records that exist outside of Orzammar mention giant, gr great sleeping titans and the first ancestors. Maybe Orzammar's leaders removed all reference to the titans from their memories on purpose. Maybe they buried a report on Valta for the same reason. Are they afraid of something? Maybe accepting that we all came from the titans makes it harder for them to defend the case system and their treatment of the case list. Yeah. Oh, that is interesting. That is actually a really good point because the dwarves have a very strict case system, right? You have the nobles and you have the merchants and you have like the artisans and then you have like the cast list right i think they're yeah yeah um and freaking the way it sounds like very very vaguely from what what's her name um harding has been saying is that there was like not a hive mind but a consensus a collective consensus essentially and in that sort of a thing there's no like inequality there's also no like rising above you know but there's no falling behind either you know again it's kind of cunari esque maybe actually honestly it's where the cun like if my theory is correct that the canari are the dwarves or elves who were infested with infected with dragon blood and were driven you know treated as weapons and oh, told to be crazy you know what i mean and then they um, come out of that, and they don't know, like, there's somebody, at, like, whoever their, like, Buddha guy is, and I can't remember his name, but you read about him in the Storm Coast. Um, maybe he encountered the Titans and was able to, like, sort of pull from them a little bit of what, like, the collective consensus type of thing is, so that you're not... Um, so that there's, like, some form of, like, societally... in imbued control you know um and a, a sense of like a collective nature where it's like all working for the common good as one entity as best as possible you know um so interesting yeah orzammar would potentially be really upset that if they're all come from the same thing and they're all supposed to be part of this collective that like they're like oh how are we supposed to keep building off the case system i don't know how cal Shirok does it we don't know anything really about couch rock i want to jump down there it's a little weird that nobody's down there like even in a you know a uh, i saw over there they're over there it's more than insulting it's salt in the wound and that is my purview ha ha very clever very clever oh i came in okay All right, let's find the guy who is the grandson who is responsible for all this. The next march, like an exalted march? Crow diplomacy signed in blood from a period after influence is claimed, but before responsibility was accepted. If nations march on the elves, Antiva will not be silent. Never again. Really? From a period after influence was claimed, but before responsibility was accepted. Okay, so at, during one of the, the exalted march that destroyed Halamshral, the second elven nation, um, after they were freed from Tevinter with Andraste, that was destroyed in an exalted march. And apparently Antiva, though Chantry, uh, feels some guilt over that um, about the elves in particular. Interesting. Never again. I mean, there are pro there are probably a lot of elves in the ranks, honestly. All right, hello. Where's the tr the trader? The grandson trader? I could have daggers in a hundred necks by nightfall. No doubt, but more necks would present themselves tomorrow. I have other daggers. <laughs> I have more daggers. Am I interrupting? Forgive Taya. She gets testy when our contract is delayed. Help me out here. What contract? One that may involve you. You want help against the gods. We want Treviso free. We now think they may be the same problem. The occupation has a face. The Antam commander, Keith Lord Butcher Dathrata. But Viago thinks killing him outright is short-sighted. The Butcher took the city suspiciously fast. Removing him is useless if someone else can repeat that. With the help of gods or something else. Despite it being the outcome, assassination is not about killing, it's about sending a message. That's what I learned and in Inquisition. what message would that be? The crows rule Antiva, and Treviso will be free. 
Yes, when you can be an assassin in Inquisition, the assassin teacher tells you, she's like, it's not about knifey, shiv, dark, sneaky, sneaky. It's what the bards are for. The bards are the one, like the specific bards, not minstrels, but like bards are the ones who like are moving behind the shadows and trying to not get caught or trying to make things look, you know, natural, you know, but assassination is about sending a message. Like it is shocking and like can be brutal and quick and like, not hidden necessarily like it's not like right out in the open but it's also not necessarily like hidden you know what i mean sounds like you think the occupation wasn't just about force cruel as the butcher is he didn't break the city with a siege it was sudden and complete like he had it all mapped where to march and what to close off to choke resistance he had inside information spies he had something and until we know what it was, killing him isn't the contract. So they're trying to make their own contract, is what it sounded like earlier. Oh, don't mind me, just rearranging the camera a little, because it was like, I'm like half, I was like half in it. Butcher Dothrata. What do you know about him? The Antem army fractured split among warlords and he seems to have kept the most traditional discipline ah and the rank and file like it his numbers keep growing but the butcher himself is odd odd how he gives daily speeches about how the occupation is somehow merciful and the way he talks it's familiar it's like he thinks he belongs here and i won't have it hmm has anybody seen him you're in charge? Antiva has a king. Oh, you. And the power of a king is enforced by armies. Antiva has no army. It has the crows. There's a reason Antivan coins have portraits of guild leaders, not royalty. We're patriots. Mm. Crows can't field a battalion, but we protect our nation our way. Yeah, well, just apparently an all-on onslaught did not... did not, uh... End well for the way you guys do things. The gods care about taking Treviso? The Butcher wants Treviso. The gods may just want the Antam. But Antam distrust magic and outright fear demons. They should be enemies. Power can turn anyone against their own interests. Their own people. Yeah. He's the one who's potentially, like, royalty. Apparently his dad's the king. So it's like, it, it's sort of a moot point, right? If you're ruling, you have the blood of the ruler and also you are, I think maybe he married into the crows and I think she might be a crow, like by blood. Helping the crows helps everyone in the long run. What's the first step to your message? We have a scout named Dareth. He said he was onto something the butcher was hiding. He was in the Drawn district, so that's a place to start. Find our crow and help with his contract. Find your crow. Then what? We break this occupation. We craft the message one step at a time. And when we finally assassinate the person who leashed Treviso, that death will tell everyone. The crows rule Antiva, and Treviso will be free. Or maybe there's not much of a blood I've thing going on here. I've noted the location of Dareth and his cousin, Jacobus, in the Drown District. They're always together. Jacobus will be eager to help. Perhaps too eager for one so young. Can you blame him? We've all lost too much to this occupation. One so young. That seems like they're jointly ruling. You're new as well, right? I'm D'Artonia Charis. Dimitri. Just Dimitri. Hello. Just Dimitri? Just Dimitri. What? Nothing. Never mind. Yeah, I, I can't imagine getting a bunch of uh, senses of humor, you know? In the crows. Well, that's a lie. I bet you it's like split 50 50 between knifey, shiv, dark, sneaky mans and uh, hilarious jokesters, pranksters. Where's my lore at? What is that? What is this? Give it, give it to me. Oh, Viper's Breath. 
seemingly harmless on inspection, but lethal to those given its counterpart possibly years earlier. Oh, it said if a single drop should hit the canals, a hundred contracts would come due. Oh, okay, yeah. Interesting. One of those ones, like, I don't know if it's a real life thing, but, like, it's popular in, like, fantasy and stuff where, uh, you give somebody some sort of extract, right? And then later on some other date, you have a, a second one that will activate the first one somehow and, like, or, like, mix and, like, cause a volatile reaction. Um, but years earlier is wild because there's nothing that stays in your system that long. Oh! Oh! I was listening to God. There was gossip. Ah! Uh, I thought you were avoiding me. Was it Tia and Viago being like having a lover's sh spat? 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 That's the word. A grappling hook. A white liqueur with hints of elderflower and dark intent. Served with three coffee beans and a smile. Not sure by the eyes. Colorless, godless, harmless. Now we have you. It's a good name for a drink. Grappling hook. I don't think the crows would actually have a uniform, like of all people. Maybe like uh like a lapel pin or something, you know? But I guess to be fair, they're not again, they're not sneaky. Like it's like we are crows. We are crows, and we're in charge. You know, you're somewhat famous among the Shadow Dragons. At least the demon of Virantium is. Famous? Or in The Butcher seems more ah. than the Kingdom, but he still doesn't want any mages in the city. Well, anyway. Yes, thank you. Famous? Or infamous? Because you're a mage killer. You turn that title on the Venatori. That's a point in your favor. I saw some of the Shadows work before. Well, anyway. Their good opinion is worth having. She didn't say if it was a good opinion. Just that you're famous slash infamous. I feel like my game is like the frames are not super great. Yeah, I don't know why. Everything's set to like really high. Like it just like uh like refresh rate and stuff. You only know, just I just, I just, okay. I love not having fall damage. At the market. This is Meet Lucanus. Well, Connus meets Elaria for coffee and spends time in Treviso, talking in how talking in how life has changed since his imprisonment. Elario is his cousin, who is a traitor. I'm a hundred percent sure. Come on, Elario will meet us at Cafe Pietra. It's not that far from here. We have time before he arrives. I wouldn't mind looking around a while. Okay, I can the sell stuff. The markets are running. Good. I need to get some things while we're here. This is fun, actually. Tell I'm glad. So. Barely had time to look around when we returned from the ossuary. This place. Hang on. Does it feel very different? <gasps> In some ways, more than I expected. But then, perhaps it's me. Let's do the wings one. Oh, Hala's resolve. A trait of mutual respect that began when Antifa stood strong with the Dales. Did Antifa stand against everyone in the exalted march? Like, stand against the rest of the Chantry? I love meeting new clients. Okay. This is fun to go shopping with your companions, though. And hear their take on their own place. Here. Can I help you with anything? Do you want me to say something? A potted plant. For Harding's garden. Spearing Aww. is supposed to combat dreams. 
It's good in desserts too. Yes. So you and Alario are cousins. I'm gonna cry. Yes, but we're more like brothers. Katarina took us both in a long time ago now. Oh, okay, so they're not like blood related to her. Oh, you're the crystal guy. I, don't, I kept All hearing of the crystals you. Crystals sing to me, not just the lyrium. Lyrium should not sing to you either. Glittering gemstone. Lascar of Cal Shirok. Interesting. The Anthem almost shut us down because they don't like magic. But once I explained the vibrational harmonies, they let us stay. The vibrational har Probably because they were like, oh my gosh, please stop talking. This guy, Here's look at the way he's dressed up. I can't believe that he bought a plant for Harding. This is a everybody's been kinda like standoffish to him and he's buying them gifts. And he gets to use it for cooking. Bellara mentioned the daily seafood recipe she wants to make. The demon of Virantium is grocery shopping for the team. Have you seen what they eat? It's a miracle you didn't all starve before you hired me. I love this. I love that he's when gonna met, cook. It didn't seem like Elario and Katarina were close. It was hard to be close to her, even for me, and I was her favorite. Yep, Elario is one hundred percent the traitor. Like, I can't. I can't even. A good selection. Also, I think it's hilarious that he stands back and lets me buy it. Oh my goodness. I know it's so that I can like, you know, comment on it, but it's hilarious out of context. Fresh fruit. Nev only eats fried fish. You'd think a detective would have discovered scurvy by now. <laughs> They'd have discovered scurvy. Is that everything on the list? Uh... Yes. And Ilario should be here by now. Let's go before he gets himself in trouble. Um, but like this is all gonna go bad potentially, although we do have I mean, it's easy enough to uh travel back but you think we go shopping afterwards so that we wouldn't have to carry it around with us buy something for lucanus oh i already did but um i'll i'll find something i'm not on tom i'm ritari healer i'm help okay let's see dear has whatever you need what i mean um i mean i already bought him everything here has been charged under more light. Uh, of course, of course. Maybe the dueling merchant guy? Like, I already bought him a tea set. You know? Do you have... That, is that an armored nug over there? Each piece is an investment. That is an armored nug with a crow face? That's horrifying. Back to cataloging, then. Back to cataloging. Um, where, maybe is it telling me where the optional thing is? Ooh, okay, maybe it, uh, this, I'll look, I'll, I'll briefly look. Okay, yes, okay, it is the dueling guy. Okay, okay, okay. You can't buy something for everyone but yourself. Oh! Here. This oh, excuse is me. Excuse you. A wyvern tooth dagger? I loved wyverns as a boy. Katarina would never let me have one of these, though. As a, as a kid or as an adult? <laughs> that was really sweet. How did I know? I just I think I probably just picked it randomly, but like, oh my gosh. That's really sweet. Uh, and I was buying everything, so, you know. In here? Yikes. This is like a choke. Cafe Piedra is just ahead. That's where we're meeting your cousin? Why not the casino? House Cantori has many talents. Making coffee is not one of them. Oh, this looks like a like an elven memorial, maybe, from the Dales. I do not remember Antiva if Antiva sat out the war or not with like the exalted march. A cafe, I love cafe. My favorite cafe in the world closed down for the first time in this <gasps> Katie. Um 
for the season, and it's usually open, but they apparently don't have enough people to staff it over the winter, and I'm so sad. I hope they come back. I go there all the time. Like, it's like two Mark hours out of my, my way, watch. but it's so Krebiso good. Krebiso will come back even stronger from this. Ugh, anyway, I love it. It's so good. It has the best chai I've ever eat, ever drank, and it has the best breakfast sandwich I've ever eaten in my life. And their pastries are so good. They have such fun new ones every single day. And it's so good. It's in like a tiny little town near a national park. So I just hope they come back. I'm like, I'll work for you in my off sessions if that's a, if that is good enough. Oh wow. Antiva does look like how I thought it would. A little more mountainous than I expected, honestly. I, maybe it's because they're trying to like prevent draw distance issues, where it's like, oh, it just stretches off into the forever. I was expecting maybe a bit more like, tropically in the distance too, but it's all good. The city itself looks excellent. What's this? A uh, sleeping cat? A door? What is it? A child's toy? Well, this is an empty room for no reason. That'll probably have a reason in a little bit. Hi, hang on, is there something over here? No, but tea, I guess we could notice that, like, there's a lot of teapots in this area. Like, in, just, like, oh, sitting around. Aromatic coffee. Um, oh, a coffee maker, hang on. Of course. And even coffee maker. I will. Buy it. It's a decor thing, but I'll buy it. I do enjoy a good cup of coffee, so you know, it would be nice to have. But have we ever had? Have we had coffee in this game? Hold on. Let me just. Let me just back. I was thinking. I was like. I was like. Ah. Oh, it's like. It's like. Oh yeah. We must have had coffee, as like a word, or like I don't know why we wouldn't call it something else. You know what I mean? Like in game. Like its own special name? Why is it coffee? We've never had coffee in previous games. I could I could believe it if it was an Antivan like specialty drink. I would believe that. Finally. I thought you might leave me here all by my lonesome. Please. You think I'd ever pass up Cafe Pietra's coffee? You see, Rook? My cousin is all stomach and no heart. Good to know. Don't mind him. Ilario cannot appreciate anything but himself. They serve a specialty roast here. Andoral's breath. Bitter and sweet, like a kiss goodbye. <laughs> you should try it. I mean, I don't know, um... I, I am personally more of a tea drinker, but perfection is probably funny. But this is like uh, the like foods that they describe in like Dragon Age Two, where it's like the ham of despair, you know, or is it the cheese that tastes of despair? I think the ham tastes of despair, and the cheese tastes like something else. But yeah. You just described my dream cup of coffee. <laughs> so, is there a reason we're not talking about Ilario's information or what? We're still being spied on. No, the last one just left. Couldn't take your coffee dog. <laughs> so, you have something? The crows I sent after Sarah have picked up her trail. They say she's gone to Varantium. And I can see I'm more of a tea drinker, but I can see my character being enjoying. Yeah. I can see her being a coffee drinker. Solus would dislike that. <laughs> Solus dislikes tea too. He only likes hot chocolate. Um. But yeah, a bitter and sweet cup. I don't know. Like when when he said it, I was like, that feels like that would fit her. 
Me, I prefer chai. I don't even like like regular, like or not regular, but like not chai tea. I like chai. That's it. I don't like any other kinds. Oh, that's a lot. I like matcha also. I do like matcha. Can I? I I'm gonna question this. If she oh. is here in Treviso to kill Katarina, she can't be in Virantium already. Rook's right. Zara's giving you a false lead, cousin. Ah. You have better information. We're compromised. There's no other way Zara could even touch Katarina. You need your eyes here, in Antiva. Zara would never be foolish enough to stay. Not with you out for blood. Of course she would. If the crows protecting her are here. Ooh. Rook, reason with him, would you? He's being paranoid. This is awkward, like... I am like... not paranoid. <laughs> she came after me. She came after Katerina. She will come for you, too. If it'll make you feel better... No, she won't. Now, all right? Leave this to me. He's a traitor! Traitor! He's gone. Of course he is. Ilario always caves under pressure. Interesting. Your cousin only seems to hear about one word in ten. <laughs> He's always been this way. He hears what he wants to hear. <sighs> uh, why I would I get him a teapot when he likes coffee, though, is odd. You look happy, it's weird. Like a kiss goodbye. <laughs> Glad to be home is, is the other option, maybe. He's obviously happy to be back, you know? Bitter and sweet, you called that blend? Like a kiss goodbye. So, what would her first kiss be? <laughs> Honey and lavender cream. Oh my gosh, it's my... Intriguing. It's actually my favorite. And you? How would you describe it? How uh, would I describe a uh, first kiss? Mm, yeah. I think they're all unique. I might need a reminder is maybe what I should do, but I'm like, mm, no. I don't know. It seems like the game is not like pushing you down a specific route. Like we already picked a flirt option. So it's like now you can pick whichever one you want within it and you don't have to follow a specific route, which is nice. Like, a part of me thought I should pick Perfection because he's like, oh, he likes coffee. Now, if I don't like coffee, he'll be upset. But what it was is he specifically noted the kind of brew she likes, you know? Which is, like, nice that you don't also have to, like, try to, like, fit yourself into a mold a little bit. Like, there's obviously some things, like, there's approval and disapproval. But it's like, you can have your own opinions and, like, the character will react to those as long as it's nothing, like, you know, dire or, like, against their morals or something, you know? Um, but yeah, no, this character is definitely a coffee drinker, and I don't see her being, like, a sweet one, you know? I see her, like, enjoying bitter and sweet. The the combination really, I think, it fits her very well, so. Uh, they're all unique. Every kiss is different. Sometimes a unique pleasure should be just that. That sounds like the voice of experience. Oh, what are we talking about? I've always thought that to live truly is to live fully. But even before I was captured, my life was not really my own. So much had been determined for me. That's that tracks with the crows. Family expectations are tough. That would be. Um, I mean, she's a foundling technically, but like the Morn Watch raised her, right? So it's kind of similar to him, where he was raised by his faction. I kind of want to say time to change that, but I'm not sure... Is it, like, possible? Oh, you can't save mid. Or is it, like, a... I was trying to see if I could quick save. Um, sometimes this one's actually been pretty good. It hasn't been that, like, stoic, you know? Um, or And it's not been... A, the aggressive one is specifically the fist, but, like... I tend to prefer to go the up, you know what I mean? 
but when I did this with Harding, it turned out really well. Like we said it, we, we phrased it quite kindly as a, you've got this, you know? But yeah, let's try this. That was before. It's not selfish to spend your time on what matters to you. Perhaps what matters is who I'm with. Praise. How's your coffee? Dark, complex, and intriguing. <laughs> Ready to head back to the lighthouse? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> she just described him. <laughs> How's your coffee? Coffee with the crows. What a fun name, too. He remained worried the Tsar will hurt his cousin as she did him. Sorry, I have something in the way. Oh. Oh, good. I mean, I guess I, I'm like, oh, I'm glad I didn't buy it. But, um, again, they said if you have, if you're buying the same item, it just levels up that item, so. Pew. I'm leveling up so fast. Okay, I could work. I could grab this. I mean, I still have quite a ways to go, but I could, like, go up this line and do a, a kind of a shortcut up to the Reaper. I forgot to turn the appearance on. Oopsie. I just realized. I noticed in the cutscene that the red looks really good on her, and I was like, mm, yes, but I forgot I was wearing, I had this helmet appearance on. Oopsie daisy, that's funny. All right. Well, date with a sort of a date with a crow went well. Like that was interesting. It was. It's. It's always kind of awkward to be the third wheel. It feels like in like it's like oh you two obviously know each other very well, and then the guys like reason with him, and I'm like listen this is like a family argument you know like I don't know man, <laughs> but yeah. But that is interesting. That's also really helpful to know going forward in conversations, and I think I do need to try to like stick to my guns for my rook but i'm also trying to kind of figure my rook out still so i'm like you know each new interaction when i pick it is like oh so that's how she is you know so i, I enjoy that and i like that the stoic ones aren't necessarily like you know mean because sometimes they were kind of mean or like you know short or abrupt you know but i liked that one where it was just like it's not selfish of you to want to live your life your own life, you know, in a way that you want. Something like that, right? Where it's like, I I live by that on the daily. You know what I mean? So, anyway. So that was really nice. I liked that. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to cut away now and say thank you to my patrons. Actually, as promised before in the last video, we're going to do codex entries really quick before I say thank you to Patreon. So, queue up two codex entries. Majestic bastards. Is this about griffins? <laughs> I remember the second, la the second last one. Yeah, the second to last one. I wouldn't get closer than 60 feet, double the wingspan. That left you time to move. The beast was too weak to do much. Still, it seemed respectful to keep the distance and leave its end to animal and trainer. She starved out, not the way they should go, and not the way I was used to seeing them. Oh, they were majestic bastards, and they knew it. Ask any warden to Darce over ears for not picking nits. See, Trainer and Beast had a kinship, and both knew what they wanted. For Griffin, that bomb meant grooming. Couldn't fault them. They needed what they needed. I mean, what's fair trade for saddling a warden commander? Full plate, lightning storm, sheer dive, straight through an archdemon's wing. Legendary. You can't argue. But back on the ground, they knew what they were owed, and you couldn't shortcut and douse them. They had all the majesty of a paddling rat if you waterlogged the feathers. Feathers. No, it was a grueling task of preening thirty bloody feet of wing. And you'd better remember, or maybe the thing got pissy next flight and cut an oak too close, gives you a love tap so hard your next your next helm dented. Still, everything in balance, every talent tipped, there was nothing that compared. You could reach down from the sky and cradle Thetis in your hand. Anyway, yes, I remember the second to last one. After she dropped, the robes took some cross cuts because they do that. They do things like that. And then we burned it, and then I got drunk. I do not remember the very last, and you can't make me. Comments of an unnamed Grey Warden excerpted from Vicehop Records on the extinction of a treasured species liberated for public consideration by Philip Bard. Philum gets around. I don't usually, I'm not a big fan of Philum generally, uh, <laughs> because anybody who puts, who has an appellation, I'm going to use that all the time after hearing that, after hearing Morgan say it. Um, but puts a exclamation point in their appellation is, um, um <laughs> you know, you know, everything you need to know about them at that point, you know, I remember this one. It was really sad. Go. The gray wardens. Whoa, too bad we're black. Oh, <laughs>
The blight had ravaged the land for months. The armies of great kings amassed for one last stand. As the sun burst through the clouds that boiled and churned in the dark sky, it illuminated a vast seething horde of dark spawn with the arch demon at his head. It was then, when courage seemed to fail and all lost to despair and death, that the Grey Wardens came. Ba ba da ba! The, the, what is it? The Siege of, um... Hmm, why? I, the Helm's Deep. <laughs> the Helm's Deep with the Rohirrim coming over it. I'm like, I'm like, I have all these Lord of the Rings references in my head, but only half formed, apparently. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums and stood before the armies of men. The Grey Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth. E ever between man and the encroaching Darkspawn, they formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the Archdemon was dead and the last Darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt. Then, demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice, the Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds rolled back and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the Great Kings knew that they had lost no men and none of their blood had been spilled. This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought, and yet about all of them. They have always defended us from the Dark taking losses so we do not have to Ugh, see this is one of the things that i fell for the propaganda of the gray wardens you know or like i don't even i don't even want to call it propaganda like to the tales of heroism of the gray wardens it's just ugh. the tale outlined above this is why i was i was actually very close to becoming a warden and then in this one but i was like oh i'm so used to saying my warden and meaning the one true warden you know what i mean like from origins so like i was like i don't know like i've already played a warden you know but i love that they brought him back honestly you know and, and gives you the option to play them again like i think i think that's cool um but still it's like i'm like oh it's almost like sacred and i'm like that was her you know what i mean um, the tale outlined above is widely told, although subject to regional variations. Free marchers might substitute great kings for titles bestowed in their given city-states. In Ferozen, the implied army of wardens is sometimes replaced with two, representative of the national heroes who fought and defeated the archdemon at Denerim during the Fifth Light. The beating of wings is a reference to the griffins the wardens are said to have ridden into battle. Although griffins went extinct long before the recent blight, they still appear in numerous stories, sometimes serving as a metaphor for the wardens' unrestrained courage, but also employed to please an eager, eager audience. From Tales of the Wardens by Sister Manon. Alright, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fane, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my Sapling Tier patrons, Reese Galito, thank you so much, and Sebastian James, thank you so much. I appreciate your guys' support. Uh, and I want to give an extra super special shout out to my Forest Tier patrons who have gone above and beyond in their support of me and the channel and who I truly, honestly cannot thank enough. So thank you, Christopher, so much for your support. And thank you so much, Nightshade, for your support. I appreciate you both very much. And thank you all again for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.